Uh, well, <laughs> I, I like doing that because it's um, a lot of times it will uh, provide insight to other people, get like a different different perspectives to other people. Okay. Yeah. So I'll I'll move this screen over here. Yep. Uh, so I can look at you. I got my brand new three monitor setup now. Oh, that's uh, uh, that's the life. <laughs> that's the life. <laughs> yeah, and actually for the uh, for the remote option and uh, during the event, we're gonna set up like so so that other people can feed in. Like we'll have separate screens. We're planning on doing like so. There's the main screen with us talking, but then like people, other people's screens. So it's really like gets the feeling of global collaboration, and it's like control room. Everyone's feeding in, and information mm -hmm. is coming out. And so we're gonna invest a bit into the infrastructure for broadcasting. And yeah, yeah, that, that kind of deal. So it'll be really good for other people too. So, Cause we'd like to have a lot of uh, remote participants as well uh, during the event so that, you know, it's all about the, you know, trying to maximize the collaboration part. So, yeah. Yeah, probably smart to flesh it out since, since uh, it's so easier to gather a crowd digitally than, than physically. Yeah, yeah, that too. Cause I mean, we can do a lot of the collaborative design parts, like the parts that I think are quite interesting is really getting people around the idea of how it is possible that average people do collaborate and and provide a meaningful impact because uh, I, I kind of like Edison's quote that genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration and it's, yeah, yeah. it's it's true because it's like the ideas are easy you know we you know we got to make a better world we got to solve these issues but um, but then to actually do it is is effort. But that effort, if you have a lot of people, can be divided effectively, and we can all collaborate. Do it because any little ta any task, if you really master the work breakdown structure of any problem, you know, breaking breaking down things into little parts, it becomes very very manageable. And and average people can do it with minimal training. That's kind of the the basic philosophy that we're saying. And we can say, okay, now we can actually do advanced cultural and scientific development with many more people than we ever thought possible yeah yeah it's a, a good word is iterative i think that's yeah. the correct word in english yeah yeah iterative and, <laughs> and, oh, yeah. and the idea is that as long as people understand the concept that okay if you document in a particular way that makes it accessible then man then anyone can do it and you're not wasting your time it's inspiring because you know that uh, others will build on it and effectively you become immortal you know immortal as in you <laughs> the, the development continues and it's you know psychologically it's great because you, you see your connection to the greater world through it so that's it yeah it's like cleaning your apartment it's a lot more fun when there's several people doing it but yeah that, yeah um tell me tell me if you have questions about the program for summer, if I September you. the 1st through uh, November the 30th, when when are you thinking of arriving? So, uh, I haven't yet contacted the American Embassy here, but to stay more than three months, I will need to get um, sort of a student visa. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, months. otherwise I need to keep it just within those three months, but hopefully I'll be able to come maybe even mid-August, but I can't confirm that right now. Uh -huh. That's pending whether you get the student visa? Yeah, just if I can do that process. It shouldn't be too hard, really. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. I hope. Yeah. Um, I, so ideally, you'd like to arrive mid mid August? Yeah, I, I would like to make the most out of it. Um, I, yeah, I'm so currently unemployed uh, and just like, I want to do so much. Um, of the whole process as possible and really immerse myself yeah so yeah. two extra weeks is not it's yeah and, you, do good at. and your background is what's your background in terms of skill set uh, technically uh, very small uh, I, I worked for about eight nine months uh, at an um, electric bike battery repair store right. and now I, I will try to learn just about everything so mm -hmm. through that time I, I soldered um, I fixed some random electronics, I fixed electric bikes, um, replaced parts, rebuilt them, and then I also made batteries through these 18650 cell packs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And non technically, uh, non technically, what's your background? Uh, no university degree. Um, I I was about to do an engineering, but I choose not to. So I spent a lot of my life traveling and living in different places. Mm -hmm. Basically, I would say that's my life experience. I've been in China, in Brazil, stayed a lot of time in Colombia and in Mexico as well. Yeah. And how were you able to, to support yourself throughout this? Um, well, I've done some investment earlier in my life, um, sort of. <laughs> and then Sweden is... About Bitcoin? Other. But I, I did this journey when I was 23 for two years where I... Oh, there we're back. Sorry, you, you cut out for a sec. Um, go ahead. But I guess I, I have a knack for reading up a lot of information and then placing money sort of smartly and then being able to travel and go about that way. Otherwise, I've worked intermittently, um, like until January this year. When you say uh, investing, are you talking about like just stock market? Yeah. Also betting, like I, on maybe... Not everyone thinks that's uh, for the 2016 election. I bet it quite heavily that Trump would win because mm -hmm. for some reason I had that intuition. Well, that's what it looked like to me, and uh, um, I made some money out of that through that buying Canadian weed stocks, and then you know I was in a flow, I'd say, I guess. And with that money, I could travel for two years and not really yeah. care too much. Yeah, no, that's cool. So, so uh, do you have questions about the program itself? Um, any any particular thing that stands out right now? I like to arrive with like zero preconceived notions and just immerse myself. So I, I usually don't think too much about trying to figure out all the details or having yeah. having to know. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I understand in a broad sense very well what you're trying to do. Yeah, and yeah. and that's. That's all I need to know, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> as far as the, which part of it is the most compelling to you? Like, is it about spending most time in a workshop learning hands-on skills? Is it design principles? Is it the CAD? Is there a specific aspect of it or is it everything? Just it's, the whole package. I think it's two part. One part is that I, I realized this last year that I really like working technical things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, passion and a, and a, um, a drive that's uh, I realized about myself that I need to procure more of that and 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 and, and get better. But also, for a long time, let me ask I, you this: Under what motivation? Yeah. Why why do you want to get better at it? Because I like to use the solution uh, engineering side of my brain that I realized I had to mm -hmm. sort of uh, visualize and build and try and and yeah okay. construct. Go from mind to hands and physical objects that do things, yeah. basically. Uh, and I haven't had too much of that. A lot of reading. I, I enjoy philosophy, and that's probably the second reason. Uh, see, I didn't go to university when I was 22, 23, and I always felt a bit disillusioned, I guess. Um, and a, a, a nagging feeling that that system is not really fruitful. Yeah. <laughs> The yeah. second part, why I just I feel like your program or your uh, mission or the mission of the organization really uh, um, talks to. It's like the first prince. Like it's it's very much does away with the old thinking and goes yeah. back to how you actually produce something efficiently. And and for me that feel I I feel wholeheartedly on board with that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, are you comfortable? It seems like you're going to be very comfortable in the kind of environment which we have, which is about total create creativity. Which is, we've got parts and materials for a lot of different things. We've got the modules that we've developed already. But I'm trying to make it as the experience where it's like, okay, you guys, this is you guys learning and actually implementing it, and as in you're contributing to the actual design. It's like, okay, we have a lot of work done already. We've got various modules like power cubes or universal rotors, the universal axes, controllers, frames, and 
and basics of how you construct anything. But then after that, uh, we can build things, but it will be better when people contribute to it and make little incremental iterative improvements. So is that the part of where you actually have that agency to do that? Is that, is that an attractive part to you? To, to really like, if, if the program says this, but it's like there's enough people and they say, oh man, oh yeah, we should do this. And then they actually go about it. The, the creative open approach, are, are you uh, comfortable in an environment like that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I think it's. I think in a constructive group where where a lot of point of view can can points of view can intermesh and and, and mm -hmm. produce something new. That's good. Mm -hmm. Usually, it's not too many chefs, basically. Yeah, yeah. And I definitely am the sort of person who tries to think about the thing that no one else is thinking about. So I, I like to go my own way. I like to propose my own solutions. Yeah. Um, but uh, as I said, my technical abilities is sort of low, so. I think the imposter syndrome uh, alarm clock is going to ring for, for many years um, in the um, future. Uh, can you explain it? What do you mean by imposter syndrome? Regarding well, I don't see, like, I don't, well, what I'm trying to say is that uh, in a room full of skillful people doing good work, uh, it's, I mean, it, it's easy to maybe not um, assume that. that the idea would be worthful but it's, it's I mean it has it's it's natural within the concept that you're making so yes I'm, I am comfortable with that being the, the idea of the group yeah dynamic yeah, that's good yeah. that's good um, do you are you concerned so you mentioned about <clears throat> too many chefs um, tell me more about that do you can you work as a team effectively? Yeah, so that absolutely. Is, that means you know, be a part of it or take leadership if you have if you have authority. But if you don't have the authority, don't push your ideas on on people. Kind of deal, which is a careful balance because a lot of people are are like, oh, it has to be this way, or I or I'm not playing with you, <laughs> which is yeah, no, how yeah, how we roll, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I don't uh, think that works anywhere else, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, as far as um, what else to cover here, just one thing about, so s since there's still the, the COVID issue, are there any restrictions? Uh, you mentioned that you're going to have to go to a non, non-European country before that due to COVID? That's U.S. Or? law. So anyone flying into the U.S. needs to be outside of... Or it needs to be come from a non Schengen or European Union country. So if I were to fly from Stockholm straight to, to US, I wouldn't be allowed to enter. But if I made a, a passage through, for instance, Colombia, then if I stay there for fourteen days, it would be fine to to enter. Afterwards. Is that what you ha what people from Europe actually have to do? So they have to go to a non EU country before. For those who travel, I haven't really asked one anyone who does it. I, I'm sure there's like business visas and stuff you can wave that with but for me that that would be how i have to do it yeah oh interesting um which is a lot better than not being able to fly in at all yeah now if you did fly in without having that intermediate step what would they do would they send you back or would they quarantine you no idea not not too keen to figure out either <laughs> okay, so just... yeah yeah um are you planning to get get the vaccine no, not really. Uh, hopefully, uh, I can sidestep that completely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so I think the way we resolve that, that uh, people who are concerned, I mean, definitely they get the vaccine. Um, I think it's somewhat of a self-solving issue in that the people who are concerned, they have the option to do so. Um, some people probably like from third world countries might not even have access to the vaccine. Um, but the the issue do, does exist if if there's individuals who are really concerned that there's people who don't have the vaccine. Are you willing to do something like? The, I mean, they would wear a mask. We don't know how it's going to turn out. It's, it's September, and it's a dynamically evolving situation. But if there's the um, if someone is really concerned, are you okay wearing a mask and stuff like that? Or of course, yeah. Um... Yeah, I want to attend. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think 
because there's yeah i mean it's such a such a politically divisive time it's like the collapse of civilization yeah. right now you know <laughs> we got we got to we got to hurry up we got to fix this cuz <laughs> yeah. it's an issue uh, i think our work it can be significant um, solution to it by providing opportunity and this is to everybody like the thing that made me i, I started thinking a lot about in the recent past is is how should not be serving the the typical audience that we typically serve which is just like techies and affluent people it's like we got to make more way to 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 those people who really need it the third and fourth worlds those are alive and and active everywhere so so we're trying to think how we can do that with things like scholarships and and making explicit call outs for okay let's have disadvantaged people women or third world country people fourth world country people make make a special invitation to that cuz so far our audience is it's quite elite i mean um you know the the progressives but but it takes everybody so we're trying to break those barriers like the class the class barriers that are kind of so prominent these days yeah so yeah no oh, that's good and an obvious step forward yeah 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 so but you know we just try to focus on creative solutions for everybody Same yeah with material material prosperity for everybody but i think you you said philosophy right. <laughs> yeah um well i don't know what to say else i mean I, I think we're pretty good so but i do want to get you thinking on on some things in which you can prepare do you have time uh, what what's what's your level of engagement and other things before that because there's there's a lot of stuff you can prepare the thing that we want people to uh, point out definitely download the OSC Linux and and learn the so-called feature on the feature exercise the in FreeCAD because we'll mm -hmm. be using FreeCAD a lot so we're, we'll be working a lot with part libraries that we have already created and which we use to then <clears throat> build upon and people will get most out of the program if they know come in knowing FreeCAD otherwise you really have to pick it up to to make use of the design part so the schedule would be largely there's the one hour of design training which is I'll be talking about all the design principles the, the pattern language of technology for designing anything and how to collaborate um, and allow other people to to build upon it and, th and then we practice so so before we go out into the shop which is most of the time which is the whole afternoon the morning would be so there's a class on design and design guides for designing anything and the way we think about it is there's we have the 50 machines in the global village construction set but we also talk about the construction set approach first of all we're designing whole sets of machines like the tractor bulldozer backhoe and uh, truck maybe they're all related they use similar parts so we talk about product ecologies and at the same time there's you step a level down what are all the components of that technology so we we kind of have a list of um, running list of like 500 more um, smaller items like here's a solenoid here's a hydraulic cylinder here's a motor here's an electric uh, electric motor or various basic components that everything is made of uh, but with these we teach people how how you actually put them together and interface them and make the interface the human interface to these things more accessible meaning like right now only t you know engineers and you know these advanced people can can work with these things because there is no interface that makes it accessible to humans uh just like the you know good, good metaphor is the computer like everybody uses a computer right now you know take go a few decades back it was only like top scientists right so mm -hmm. that technology completely became accessible to people and people can work with it and that's the the same metaphor for what we're trying to do with technology so We'll be teaching you how to put those building blocks and, and make them into usable modules that then people can build upon that. But to do that, so there's FreeCAD, so you can take those basic parts and now start making bigger things or different things with it. So the, the FreeCAD mm -hmm. part, that's critical. Um, yeah. Definitely got to learn that. Uh, otherwise, you it doesn't take too long to to learn FreeCAD in the basic kind of workflow that we do, but, but we definitely encourage everybody to come in with that so that mm. we hit the ground running. Um, so we will do like two hours of practice and in, in design like every day. Um, so that by the, by the end of it, you, you'll be really good at just modifying things and here's, okay, now I can throw that on a CNC torch table or a 3D printer to make it and stuff That's like that. Dream. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's gonna be great, but 
people have to t- t- do the basics. Like a lot of times when we had the summer the summer camps, uh, I of course tell tell people, okay, download OSC Linux, learn FreeCAD, and very few people actually do that. And then we're spending all this time just trying to even make FreeCAD run. Um, yeah. So so if you do that, you'll you'll hit the ground running, and and that'll be good. So that's the that's the thing I definitely want to ask you to do FreeCAD and uh, OSC Linux, so we have the whole software stack. And then beyond that. Um, can you do any, any stuff? Um, do you want to get involved in some of the, so, cause going, coming into September, we'll be doing like actually July, July and August, we'll be doing a lot of builds and prototyping here too, to get ready and stuff like that. Uh, to make sure all the machines are up. We have a big cluster of 3d printers and a one or two torch tables that are available for everybody. Um, are you interested in getting involved in some of the design leading up to that? Because there's there's a bunch of stuff that we can do if you if you if you can learn the FreeCAD. The the thing is there's the I don't know if you've seen it, the FreeCAD badge the basic exercise of drawing a feature on a feature. So you take a two dimensional sketch, you extrude it to a three D object, then you put a feature on it of any shape, um, and then another feature on that feature. That's the basic feature on a feature exercise. Which uh, if you can do that, you can pretty much design just about anything. So for three D printing or because any any complex device is made up of little primitives that that you can draw out in two dimensions uh, for their profiles and and FreeCAD has a very powerful sketcher functionality which allows you to draw things um, all kinds of yeah things and I looked up there's the different workbenches and you yeah. you yeah Abs- absolutely I, I I do wanna get involved mm-hmm. uh, I think you're perfectly aware of my my skill set so mm-hmm. uh, bear with me but uh, yes um, absolutely um, so I would encourage you, like, um, go into, there's a page, have you seen the OSC badge, FreeCAD badge page on the wiki? It's called FreeCAD badge. FreeCAD badge. Um, let me send it to you. But that's the exercise you want to do. Um, let me see, let me paste that in the chat. Yeah. Do that as soon as you have it, email me, and then we'll get you involved in some of the teams. Um, and this is about installing the, the Linux? The yeah, well, yeah, you, I, I would encourage you, you can just, at this point, just download OSC Linux 1. That has FreeCAD 16, Cura, which are going to be the two more most important things for prototyping and designing. Um, we're still working on releasing FreeCAD, sorry, the OSC Linux 2.0. That's not mm-hmm. out yet, but... See the in 2.0 we don't have Lulzbot Cura, which is really nice uh, optimized Linux optimized version of Slicer for 3D printing. So, mm-hmm. man, right now you know since Lulzbot kind of uh, sold out to another company, they don't have that ni- really nice Cura version anymore. So Linux Aussie Linux One actually is a good. Uh, we might even say just for everybody to keep on Linux One because it's got the basic the basics yeah so just download linux one and and run it there's free and do you know if that's it. possible to install because you oh, do yeah. a, a oh, yeah, partition absolutely. right yeah yeah you can partition you i'm can not on a pc I'm, I'm, I'm on one of these uh, newer macbooks but this, they have their own chipset yeah yeah you should be able to do that there's instructions on um so if Great. you go to the osc linux page so yeah let me let me point you to that osc linux thank you yeah and I'll send a follow up with you um, and a little uh, onboarding survey. So there's OSC Linux, just do 1.0. Um, there's a link, download and install v1.0 from 2017. And that'll be good. Then we can get you involved on the teams uh, and we'll keep the energy building. Now, the new thing, so actually, uh, just yesterday I recorded my next video, which is the, the, the apprenticeship. So it's actually a six month thing from um, July 1 through mid-December. So people who are interested in, in the deeper, kind of the deeper way of getting into OSC where uh, it's, it's, it's an OSC enterprise apprenticeship. So it's a long, it's basically the deeper version of the, the Summer X. So Summer X is pretty much, okay, you're uh, building all these things. In an apprenticeship, it's more you're, you're in the back end of it and you're, you're developing more and learning more. Uh, it includes a focus on enterprise because at this point, a lot of our, our work is very, you know, it's productized like the brick press or, or the 3D printer and now the house. 
but we've got so many other things that need to be turned into products and that's why we're starting the the apprenticeship so that people the explicit goal is help us and let's all collaborate on getting these all these other things into into the marketplace as open source open source tools that can cause distribute we call that distributed market substitution did you uh, read about that on the wiki yet no i have not read about that that's so we we talk about distributed enterprise which is we share all the enterprise so that people can replicate and benefit from it now yeah, yeah. i believe that beyond that is if there's enough people just like happens with anything if there's enough eyeballs looking at it it becomes the best so what we see is that you take a common thing like okay here's a tractor here's this house i mean we're, we're setting very explicit goals we're saying this is going to become some of the best material that people will want to replicate you need enough eyeballs on it and enough developers but then that should become a very powerful if not dominant uh, force in the marketplace because it's just the most versatile it's the best, better, faster, stronger through open source. Uh, so our theory is that once we achieve that, then um, that will pretty much take over the marketplace. It almost yeah. happened with 3D printers. Unfortunately, after, because 3D printers all came from the open source RepRap project. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. know if you're aware of that. Um, no, no. Yeah, I mean. Uh, most, most common ones are still open source, I think, right? Or like the, the mm -hmm. DIY ones. Someone, users. But not really. Okay. Uh, you can say that, but as far as um, the Prusa research, Prusa printers, which I think are the number one selling 3D printer worldwide, as far as I, I checked last time, um, yeah, they are open source, but but they don't really do the collaborative thing as much. Like right now, it's no. they're just trying to run a company and, and be successful, as opposed to they started out, you know, with, with uh, open source centric as the very core of their their existence, but. But the thing is, um, the thing that other people don't have is the distributive aspect, meaning like, okay, here's the enterprise. Now we're teaching you how to do more of that enterprise. Instead, they're just all centralizing. It's like Prusa's got their facility and uh, wherever they got, but they're not saying like we are, which is, okay, now you do this business in your country or in your city or something. Um, they're just, they're kind of becoming business as usual in a sense that the open source potential for distributing livelihood has become secondary i mean initially that was that was mm -hmm. the initial mission of the the reprap project it's like make anything and a self-replicating manufacturing infrastructure which then creates jobs and and makes life easy for everybody but that that has been very much undelivered uh, as, mm -hmm. as of today and of course there was a history like of the the greatest uh, the largest 3d printer company called makerbot a uh, long time ago, like 2012 or 13. Then they actually became proprietary and sold out to another large company. It was a big fiasco in, a, in an open source world. But at that time, it was the biggest company, and it showed to the world, oh, okay, once you start making money, you got to go close source, you know? Uh, so, so there's been um, uh, the, the promise of the distributive nature of open source hardware uh, has not really materialized at all. Um, but that's that's what we're working on we're saying well let's try that uh because right now there's uh, so first of all there's a history in 2013 where makerbot became proprietary so so at that time the largest 3d printer company um that was open source no longer and there were a couple of really good ones like lulzbot and prusa that came out um and ultimaker and Ultimaker is not open source, though the software is from Ultimaker. Um, for for Prusa, they're effectively they're open source, but they don't really sh you know kind of collaborate in an open source community. I would, in my opinion, uh, whereas initially they were releasing all this hardware designs and everything into the public. Right now, it's they kind of got, got their own thing, and. Um, and I mentioned that Lulzbot actually sold out to another company, so that open source culture that was centric to, to the organization kind of, I think, pretty much disappeared, too. Um, so the promise has not been delivered. Um, 3D printing came, came close because all those projects, that, uh, the products that I mentioned, they all came out of the open source RepRap 3D printer project. So that industry has pretty much been dominated you can call that distributed market substitution by open source in some way to a certain um, point to, a certain, to degree, a certain point but yeah. 
<clears throat> um, it's centralized. You got it all centralized, pretty much. You know. But I guess it's, it's still a proof of, of concept in, in being able to deliver a product. Um, it is. It is a proof yeah. of concept that, that the biggest companies in the world right now came out of an open source project because that enabled uh, all the critical IP, all the yeah. critical know-how that was necessary to make it happen. So that's, that is a good thing. And then uh, the next step is actual distributed economies where we're now we're actually solving for the distribution of wealth, which um, I don't think has happened. I think I think the trends are actually further concentration. I'm not really clear about that. The Gini coefficient is a thing that measures the distribution of wealth across the world, mm -hmm. and I think it's um, I think it's going down. Down is good. That means more people have access to wealth, but the grand promise of the internet has not been delivered yet and that's what we're working on so i think the hardware is going to have a way bigger impact than the software so um, absolutely we have resources but yeah. we seem to lack infrastructure yeah yeah, yeah. so that's yeah. that's the thing to solve and, and um that's why you're gonna make it happen at the summer x and you know, <laughs> however you know ideally like 100 or so people um possibly up to like 200 or something we'll see no, we'll see how many how many people but that's really all all the people it's like very focused development time to, to make it all happen including we're going to do a in august we're doing that i mentioned the hack the big hackathon where we where we uh pretty much work on a, a grand publication to release the business sides of the cd go home so that's going to come in in august as well but yeah the apprenticeship um yeah that's starting july 1st i'm actually so i'm publishing that today so you'll see that I'll uh, see more info about it. Um, but yeah, we want to get 24 people in the first cohort and pulling strongly to to, to release more open source products. Yeah. Um, oh, great. Yeah, so what else? What else here? I think I think we're pretty good. So so definitely want to get you get you involved uh, in terms of prior to the summer X, if you can get a handle on the FreeCAD and, and OSE Linux, definitely. Yeah. Uh, let me know as soon as you do the the FreeCAD badge. This is basically you have to record a one minute video that you do that exercise in um, according to the instructions. Uh, do that. Uh, do you have time these days or are you pretty busy with absolutely. other things? Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so so if you're if you're open to it, I mean we'll be actively uh, finishing up all the you know, everything. Um in it's just it's really the iterative thing it's like okay we're keep on making incremental improvements to what we have already organizing things making it look better on a wiki creating enterprise assets like product manuals and and brochures and, and economic analyses and all of that we'll, we'll be getting into all of that and you're also taking that enterprise track yourself so we'll be covering a lot about okay here's how you run builds here's the exact cost structure here's how you will recruit people and ideas about that and how do you do marketing because it's really about um, about getting the product out into the public focusing a lot on documentation it's we really like the word edu marketing that we're educating people but it's also that's how people get interested in this stuff because a lot of people haven't heard about this this kind of method of working yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. killing two birds with one stone i guess but, yeah uh, yeah yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think I don't. I'm not sure. Um, did I have any questions? Did something come to mind? Yeah. Um, what do your friends say about this? Have, have you talked to people? What's the feedback you're getting? Uh, your Everyone's first reaction is like, "Oh, how the farmers hack tractors because they just pick out open source and they pick out the word tractor and that's that's because <laughs> they heard about all these young deer um, hacking uh, operations." And then I explain now it's about actually creating a modular uh, machines for industrial output and cr try to create abundance and and, mm -hmm. and then they get it. Uh, but yeah, I think it's cool. They're excited for me to go and come back with knowledge. I guess. Mm -hmm. I hope I will. And as far as what you'd like to get out of it, tell me a little bit more. What would be the ideal outcome if you're thinking about this? You picked up some skill sets of. of very decent design and build skills, the ability to collaborate. What would be the ideal outcome for you? Well, I would like to have uh, um, a technical knowledge that if there was something that I wanted to create that wasn't inside of, of the project or, or the uh, open, uh, open ecology, uh, that I would 
feel comfortable with, with doing it. Um, I want to understand the collaborative efforts because I have some past experience with with burner culture and how you do kind of open source projects to to finish uh, arts or even mm -hmm. temples or buildings. Um, and I love that part. So if I could become great at the collaborative effort or understanding the team aspect of it, I could mm -hmm. also realize bigger projects in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, but then also I would like to be a bit ensconced in, in the open source culture to actually talk with people and understand what's mm -hmm. happening in the world. And, and mm -hmm. uh, it's a much more thrilling sort of uh, ecosystem to, for me than, than all the other technical engineering aspects of like school or, or yeah uh, well we'll have people from all over the world and typically the we attract the broader thinking people so it'll be good I, I look forward to learning more than anyone else <laughs> I'll probably learn <laughs> more than, uh, than anyone yeah. else from it and that's that's the nature of the event we are all teaching each other we're all collaborating there's uh, we don't like this idea of the superhero. It's like the person, oh, look what I can do. Or even if they just do it themselves. It's more important for us to say, okay, teach others, document how you do that. Uh, help us complete the design guide. So you're, you're, you're spreading that. So you're not the guy that's doing it. You're spreading that info to others. And that's how, uh, as we talk about this collaborative creation of genius, it's like we can raise everybody up, but the key key recognition is that a person has to understand that hey i actually have some insights you you know you may be doing something for your life and you, you're like how do i teach somebody or you know do, you, you may not even be aware that that has a lot of value but if people were to stop and recognize that and so i, I mean that's what i do i i, I think what we're doing is, can be communicated and can make fundamental change so we're trying to teach people okay if you can see that about your work um, then you can actually start documenting and bringing the level of operation of everybody else up because um, the experts kind of, a lot of the experts are people who are really good at something and it'll be like, uh, they don't even know that they can teach others. And some people are arrogant and they'll be like, oh, I want to be the best and I'm cool like that. But I think there's a lot of people who uh, just don't have that recognition that they can do tremendous work in up uplifting the whole state of society. So mm -hmm. that's the kind of uh, mind shift we're trying to cultivate and give the hard techniques of how you actually do that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I get excited by thinking about it. Um, yeah. so my, my head starts racing when I think about where I'll be at or where, what I'll be dreaming about in, in, in November or, or December. Yeah. And you definitely will, like, because we focus on a cons Lego like construction set approach, yeah, I think you will be able to if you if you have a purpose like, okay, say you want to build something specific, yeah, you can absolutely do it because we, we've got the construction set building blocks. Now, uh, is there anything specific that that kind of interests you that is you're fascinated by or it's like, okay, I want to build this or anything in particular? Uh, yeah, uh, a water cleaning system for like, uh, for the small kitchen version. Um, um, thing. Like for a house kitchen that that you so what are you starting from? Are well, you like a standalone to... product you could put and then and then rinse your water drinking water through. But just from starting from what from wastewater or from rainwater or from wastewater? normal water from from normal water uh, which is really really clean and good here in Stockholm. Mm -hmm. um, but I did some reading and. I, um, there's still like uh, residue from pharmaceuticals and these sort of things you should get rid oh, okay. of. Sort of, yeah. Yeah, you guys, don't you guys do ozonation in, uh, to purify your water? I'm not completely sure. I, I know we use bacteria at least, which used, I think used to be a bit strange to do. Mm -hmm. um, it's very possible, but then again, Swedish water is very clean to begin with. There's yeah. just a lot of water up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Okay, and um, when you when you come back uh, from in about September or so, what did you think about what what you'd be doing at that time, or you, you're not there yet? Like with the skill set that you can possibly gain, did you give any thought to that yet? Uh, I'm yes, 
Um, Tell me more. Well, not in any concrete manners. Uh, I've stayed here in Stockholm now for two years, and I had some sort of vague idea that I would stay here for two, three years. So I might change location come December. Uh, I like Stockholm. I like staying here, but I have uh, certain dreams about m uh, maybe moving to Colombia. I have mm -hmm. good friends there, and I, uh, I like the country. Mm -hmm. um, so there, I'm thinking maybe maybe it would be possible to create some sort of uh, cooperative companies to get people involved in 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 building or or delivering on something. Because in that country, or in Colombia, um, I think this place would really need this new way of thinking and being uh, thinking this is actually possible and we can do it ourselves. Um, it's much more impactful there than in Stockholm, which has yeah good money and old attitudes. Um, yeah. Okay. And then, oh, and then there's a burner project here that just about to buy a big piece of land in the middle of Sweden, which will oh, yeah. be a perennial project where all of these things could come into use. Mm -hmm. As far as the idea of distributive enterprise, where where you're working on something that's that's actually a real product, do you have any issues with respect to putting that back into the commons as as public knowledge? No, no, not at all. Yeah. Yeah, because that we're trying to we're trying to or, hack the organization side too. Like uh, the thing that disturbs me is um, I, I like un entrepreneurial out, outlook on life um, as opposed to creating more employees, right? So as we go forward, like how do you do? How do you organize the the future work of OSC that you know we can still get large coordinated effort, but it's without the employment. It's not the employee. It's a more a partner and entrepreneurial relationships between people so a more distributed network of how to do that so we're, we're actually trying to explore that like if we're building the housing are we going to just hire simply hire a bunch of employees we're trying to say no we'll work together we'll partner with the entrepreneurs that we're training so we're promoting the entrepreneurial spirit as opposed to creating more people that think like employees um, mm -hmm. so I think that's a big challenge because right now I think probably like 95% of the population are perhaps in an employee mindset. I, I don't know what the exact percentage is, probably like 90, 90 to okay. 95. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's a big change I think we can do. We're Yeah, we're just thinking, we just think that that security thing is the most <laughs> important, but I, I don't know, that's such an outdated concept. we got to break through that. Yeah. Yeah, and it's also it's probably soul crushing more than anything. People not being uh, being used <laughs> in, in yeah. the best sense. Yeah, and you know people put up with it for now, but I think that's you know when people kind of grow in in the aspect of what they know that are capable of and and find out their true true productivity or true powers, then their levels of expectations will <laughs> rise above that. Yeah. Uh, I, I think there's going to be a major shift happening on that. Um, yeah, I think you need to attract people in a subcultural sense. Like the, it's the identity and the and the idea of it that attracts people. Because um, with the internet, everybody's discovering all these different um, things to be, uh, or, or, or they're discovering forums for these niche things and realizing there's thousands of other people interested in the same mundane thing, brothers, or whatever. Yeah, uh, and and it's just possible to get all of the people who are really passionate about it and and get their attention. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's not for everybody, the open source ecology or or any the other organization. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a culture, I guess. Mm -hmm. Ecology. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Well, in any case, so yeah, uh, look forward to it, uh, and I'll send you a. Like the logistics survey and all that with some other info get you going on more things but yeah as soon as you get the get the free cat badge uh, let me know we'll get you involved in one of the design teams so uh, the, the Linux link is broken for me for some reason it says sorry you must update your browser to use this site and I guess I could use another browser but... 1.0 from 2017 so I'm, you say you're clicking on internet archive I click your link which is wiki.opensourceecology.org slash wiki slash OSE Linux. Uh-huh. And scroll uh, down to v1, v1.0. 
so whenever I put that in my browser, I just get um, an error message. That's okay, um, here, click on what happens when you click on this. Same thing. Oh, I don't know what to say about that. Uh, you're not. The show wiki. Your, show your screen. Sure. Um, screen sharing. There it is. Uh, my com computer took me to settings to do some privacy. This is what I'm getting. Hmm. Uh, and the same thing. Might be something with your security settings, but go into an insecure browser and you'll get that page, I think. Um, okay. It's the free cat badge wiki page works. But I'll. I'll I, I got the URL, so. I'll, I'll, okay. Yeah, okay. do that. Make it, uh, download it. It should work for you. Um, we'll go from there. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you. I think I think that's about it for now. We can communicate before that. Definitely want to get you involved in as much before that as possible. And we'll see you at the gates of Factory Farm. Yes. Looking forward to it. Okay. Take care, Martin. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.